one Spiggy. Presenting a Midsummer Night's Dream by the Red Table Discord server. Scene 1. Athens, the Palace of Theseus. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Philostrati, and attendants. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace, for happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man rep. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly stream away the time, and then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bet in heaven, shall behold the night of our slumber. Go, Philostrata, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments, awake the hearth and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals, the pale companion is not for our poem. Exit, Philostrata. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revelry. Enter Aegis, Hermia, Lysander, and Demetrius. Happy to be this youth, or an old duke. Thanks, good Aegis. What's the news with thee? A fall of vexation come I, with a complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man had my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man had bewitched with the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and intertraged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung, with fainting voices versus fainting love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy, which bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, concepts, necks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevalent in unhardened youth, with cunning has to fill my daughter's heart, turn her of the obedience with his due to me, the sovereign harsh, harshest and my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace, Consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the absent privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I might dispose of her. We shall of either of this gentleman, or to be that ac according to her love, immediately provide in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. One that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted and within his power, to leave the figure or to disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. And himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must be with his judgment. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty, in such a presence here to plead my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall of me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether, if you feel not your father's choice, you can endure the library of a nun. For A to B, I to be in shady cloister mood. To live in a barren sister, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed, they that master sow their blood, to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly or happy is the rose distilled than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in single blessings. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the nest new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, 
for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for a austerity and single life. Demetrius. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Relent, sweet Hermia and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have let me have Hermia's do you marry him? Scornful, Lysander. True, he had my love, and what's mine, my love, shall remain render him, and she's mine and all my right of her. I do a state unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed my love is more than his. My fortunes every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage as Demetrius, and which is more than all these boasts can be. I am beloved with of be, beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then persecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nidar's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes and darly, upon this spotted inconstant man. I must confess that I've heard so much and that Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for both of you. For you, fair Armia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate. To death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business. Against our nuptial and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With theory and desire, we follow you. Exeunt all of Lysander and Hermia. How now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well between them from the tempest of my eyes. I me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love could never do, did run smooth, but either it did was different in blood. O oh, cross, too high to be enthralled, too low. Or else mi misgraft in respect of years. O oh, spite, too old to be engaged, too young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. O oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. <clears throat> or if there was sim sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness, did it lay sage to it, making it moment momentary as it sound swift as a shadow short as any dream brief as the lightning in the collided night that in the spleen unfolds on both heaven and earth and ear and a man hath the power to say behold the jaws of darkness did do devour it up so quick bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I, I have a widow aunt, a downger, I have great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. Fair gentle Helena, I marry I may I marry thee to and to that place the sharp Athena law 
cannot pursue us. And if thou, if thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, and in the wood I league without the town. Where did I meet thee once with Helena to do observance to morn of May? There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with a golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which can knit its souls and prospers lovers, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen, when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, and number more than ever women spoke, in the same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Enter Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That's fair again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair, oh happy fair. Your eyes are load stars, and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark, than lark to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear, sickness is catching. Oh, we're favor so. Yours would I catch, fair. For Hermia, here I go. My, my, my ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye. My tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Were the world mine? <laughs> Demetrius being baited. The rest I give you to be translated. Oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. What is going on here? I'm sorry. I just entered and I was like, what? Mute anybody who enters. Fuck, I'm on Continue. Continue. Who is that? Everybody, just be quiet. Maybe we should lock this room. Okay. That was really good, uh, Trap Dog. (laughs) Minus the lap. Hold on, where were we? Hermia. 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 I frown. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. And the more the I more... love, the, the more he hated me. <laughs> His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. <laughs> None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned to heaven unto hell. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold tomorrow night. On Philby doth and behold her silver vintage and this watery glass decking with a pale liquid pearl, the bladed grass. A time that lovers' flights doth steel conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised steel. And in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes, to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, Hermia. My Hermia. Exit, Hermia. Okay, I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> Can you tell me what page we're on? We um, are 11. We're on 11. We are 10. We're 10. 10. 10, top of 11. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry. I'm on target. Thank you. Okay. Wait, is this, is this next part me here? Is this, yeah, do. it's Helena. I... So we're on page 10, right? And the yeah. Or, okay. oh wait. <clears throat> Bottom of 10, top of 11. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. Ready. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some, how, how happy some other, others some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all, but he do know. And has he airs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, folding no quantity, 
Love can transpose the form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is oft so beguiled. As waggish boys and game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Ermia's aim, he hailed down Os, and he was only mine. And when, and when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved in showers of Os did melt. I will go tell him of fair Ermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here ain't main, here ain't mean I to enrich my pain to have his sight thither and back again. Exit. Scene two. Athens. Quince's house. Enter Quince. Snug. Bottom. Flute. Snout. And straveling point. Straveling. Is all our company here? You're the best. <laughs> You're the best to call a theme. Generally, man by man, according to his, according to. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is though thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the duke and the duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince says. <laughs> Says what the plan treats on, on, then read the names of the actors, and so we grow to to a point. Marry our players the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a mer- and a mercy now, good Peter Quince, call it for a few. Your actors by by the scroll, master, spread yourself. And so as I call you, Nick Bottom, the Weaver. Ready name, what part am I for the... And proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What? Pyramus? A lover of tyrants? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will have some tears in the true performing... True perf- performing of it, I do... I let audience look at... To their eyes, I will not move storms. I will condole some measures to rest. Yet my chief hummers is for a tyrant. I will play the Aurelius, rally or a part to tear a cat, to make all split to raging rocks, and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates and Phoebus' car, and make it and make it mar. The foolish fates. This is this is what blew the now name the rest of the players. This is a cruel vine, a tyrant's vein, a lover is more c- condoling. Yeah. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Tishby too. I'll speak in monstrous little voices. Tishy. Ah, Pyramus, lover dear. Thy Tishy. I don't know how to pronounce that. Dear and lady dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus. And flute you, Thisbe. Oh, well proceed. Robin, Darveling, the traitor. Robin's the trailer. <clears throat> Here, Peter Quinn. Robin, Starveling, you must take play Thisbe's mother, Tom Snout, the tinker. Fuck it, I'll read for a snack. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus, Pyramus's father, myself, Tisby's father, Snug, the joiner, you, the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be me, give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extempore, 
for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the line too. I'll roar that I will do any man's heart good. Hear me. I will roar that I'll ma make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies. Then they would shriek and there were, there were enough to hang us all. That would hang, that us. Would hang us every mother. Oh, it's all for every mother's son. Every son. Shit. I grant your friends, is that what I should fright? The ladies out their wits. They would have no more discussions but to hang us, but would <laughs> aggravate, aggravate voices so they will roar you as gently as any shocking dove. Shocking dove. I will roar you and there are any. What the fuck is that? Can somebody read that? Nightingale. Nightingale, that one. Nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. <laughs> For Pyramus is a sweet faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman like man. Therefore, you must, you must needs play Pyramus. What page is this? Oh, we're ending. Yeah. ending of 15. Why am I serving you? Get the fuck. Because we're doing a play. Be quiet. Oh. Well, I will undertake it. What what beard were I best to play it in? Why? What you will? I'll discharge it in either your, your straw, color, beard, your orange, twenty br tw br beard, your purple and gain, your beard, your French crown color. Color, beard, your perfect. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you will play bare faced. But, masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town by moonlight. There will we rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our device is known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties, such as our play once. I pray you, we, fail me not. We will meet, and there we, we may rehearse. The most up, up, uh, and cognizantly take pains. Perfect ideal. At the Duke's Oak, we meet. Enough. Hold or cut both strings. Excellent. Excellent. Act two. Should we take like a little five minute break? Um. No. Y'all want to get on the same page? Like literally. Yeah, literally. So we're the same 18, page. Scene one. Well, listen. I don't know why we would take a five minute break. I don't think we should take a five minute break. But everybody should get to the beginning of Act two, scene one, Wood near Athens. And when we're ready, we'll begin. Now, everybody follow along, and anybody who's not part of the play, be quiet, and we'll continue. Siggy, your first fairy, right? What page? We're on page. What, what the fuck does the script say? For I'll do I'm it. just going to say, do Tiny it. Cactus, when you don't know a word, Crazy. just try your best, but don't say shit like, I don't know, I don't fucking know. Just do your best and just try, but don't don't add anything to the script at all. Not one word. Okay. Okay. Siggy, I'll do the first fairy if you want. And you're, okay. you're doing... Okay. Hold on. You're whoever said that, whoever yeah, said that, just, just fill, just fill it's it. It's NSA. I'll do the first fairy. I got most of the fairies. Okay, just fill it for the fairy here. Okay. okay. I, mean, I can be the fairy if you want. Oh, no, 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 no. And this is good. But again, if you don't know, and I, I know I fucked up worse than anybody, but if you don't add any words, just if you do your best, but don't add anything, okay? Let's go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Act two, scene one. A woods near Athens. Enter from opposite sides, a fairy, and puck. How now, spirit, whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. And I serve the fairy queen and do her orbs of degree. The cowslips tall her pensioners be, in the gold coat spots you see. Those rubies fairy favors, in those freckles live their savors. I must go seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowlip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and our elves come here and on. The king doth keep his reveals here tonight. Take heed the queen came not with his. For Oberon is passing, 
feel as rough, because that she and her attendants have a lovely bird stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest's wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do square at all their elves for fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or else you are the shrewd and navish sprite. Called Robin Goodfellow, you are not he, that frights maiden of the villagery. Skim milk and sometimes labor in the quern, and bootless make them breathless housewife's churn, and sometimes make the drink to bear no barn, mislead night wanderers laughing in their harm. Those, hoblog- those hobgoblins call you in sweet puck. You do their work and shall have good luck. Are you not he? Thou speakest all right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. When I, a fat and bean-fed horse, beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly foal, and sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crab, and when she drinks against her lips, I bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale, the wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometimes for thee footstool mistake of me, then slip I from her bump, that topless she, and Taylor cries and falls in a cough, and then the whole choir holds their lips to laugh, and waxen in their and knees and swear, a merrier error was never wasted there, but room, fairy, here comes over on. And here my mistress, what that he regard? Enter, enter one fuck, fuck. Enter from one side Oberon with his train, from the other Titania with hers. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Fairies. Oh, what? Fairies. Um, skip hence. I've forsworn his bed and his company. Terry, rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady, but I know. Um, when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of corn sat all day, praying on pipes of corn and versing love, to uh, armorous Phil- Philda, Philida, why art thou here? Come, come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress, <laughs> mistress and your warrior love, to thesis must be wedded and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair eagle break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring, we met on a hill in day, forest or me, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beach margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets <clears throat> to the whistling wind. But thy, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport, therefore the winds piping to us in vain, as in revenge have stuck stuck up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every pu- um, every pelting river made so proud so proud that they have overborne their continent the ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain the plowman lost his sweat and the green corn hath rotted ear his youth attained a beard the fold stands empty in the drowned field and crows are fattened with the more in fl- the nines men the, the nine men's and moors is filled up with mud and the quaint mazes 
wanton green, for lack of tread and undistinguishable, the human mortals want want their winter here. No night, no night is now with him. Carol blood. Therefore, the moon, the governess of flood, pale in her anger, washes all the air. The rheumatic disease do abound, and thorough is the distemperature we see. The seasons alter, hoary headed frost, far as the fresh lap in the crimson rose, and on old heem's thin and icy crown, uh, and or chaplet. Uh, of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set in the spring the summer the childing autumn angry winter change their wanted liveries and in the mazed work by their increase mm, now known not which is which <clears throat> and <laughs> and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate from our dis dissension we are their parents and original do you amend it then it lies in you why should titania cross her oberon i do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman set your heart at rest the fairy the fairyland buys not the child of me his mother was a forgeress of my order and 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 the spice indian air by night Full often hath she gossiped by my side, and hath set with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we had, when we have had laughed to see the the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind, want, wanton wind, which she, the pretty, and, which pretty and with swinging swimming gait, following her, her womb then rich with my young squire would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again. As from a voyage rich with merchandise, she began, or, but she being immortal, but she being immortal of that my boy die, did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. <laughs> not for fairy, not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall, we shall chide downright if I longer stay. Thanks to Tanya with her train. Well... Go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown by the west, and I loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on in maiden meditation fancy free. Yet marked I where the bold of Cupid fell, it fell upon a little western flower before milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love and idleness, fetch me that flower, the herb I shewed thee once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, will wake man or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. How could a girl round about the earth in forty minutes? Exit. Having, having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love, 
And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. Enter Demetrius, Helena, following him. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermea? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen unto this wood, and here am I, and woed within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermea. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. Helena? <clears throat> um, wait, my, my script is... Page 25? Page 25. Top 25. Yeah, just crash a bit. Okay, well... Someone to fill in? <clears throat> Jade, go ahead. You draw me, you, you draw hard... me, you hard-headed adamant. Oh. But yet you draw not iron for my heart. Is true as steel, leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel and Demetrius. The more you beat me, I will fawn on you. <laughs> Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me. Strike me. Neglect me. Lose me. <laughs> only give me leave. <laughs> Unworthy as I am, <laughs> what worser place could I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you use your dog? <laughs> Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. <laughs> you do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself and to the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity? <laughs> your virtue is my... <laughs> okay, let's just take a minute to laugh. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Keep going, keep going. We can do this. Keep going. Okay. Your, your virtue is my privilege for that. It is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin, the mild hind. Makes speed to catch the tiger, bootless speed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wood, and we're not made to. Exit the matrix. <laughs> I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Exit. <laughs> Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast yeah, thou, okay. hast oh, thou sorry. the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it to me. I know a bank when the wild time blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania, sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delights, and there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Exeunt. 
seemed her, another part of the wood, enter Titania with her train. Come, now a roundel and a fairy song, then for the third part of a minute, hence some to kill kink <clears throat> some to kill cankers in the musk rose buds, some more with rear mice. Re- River mice for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats. Some keep back and some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots, hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. Sing me now asleep. Then to your offices I must. Then to your offices and let me rest. Okay, and say Magna Indigo. You spotted the snakes with double tongue, thorny hedgehogs be not seen. <laughs> Newts and blind words do not go wrong. Come here, our fairy queen. Fill home with melody. Sing our sweet lullaby. Lulla lullaby. Lulia lulia lullaby. Never harm nor spark charm. Come, our lovely lady nigh. So good night with lullaby. Weaving spiders come not here. Hence, you long legged spiders. Hence. Beetles black approach not near, who whom shall do no offense. Fill homo with melody. <laughs> Hence away, now all is well. One aloof stands <laughs> sentinel. Thanks, you fairies. Titan- that was fucking incredible. Titanus sleeps. Enter Oberon and squeezes the flower on Titania's eyelids. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cap or bear, pard or boar with bristled hair in thy eye that shall appear. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Exit. Enter Lysander and Hermia. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I I have forgot our way. Will rest and will rest, Hermia. And if you think it's good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. Oh, take the scent, the scent, sweet. Of my innocence, love the meaning of in love conference, and I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that my one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchange on with an oath, so then two bosoms in a single troth, then by your side no bedroom my me can deny. For lying so, Hernea, I do not deny. Lysander riddles very prettily. Now much beshrew my manners and my pride. If Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distance. And good night, sweet friend. And I love ne'er all till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen, to the sw- to that fair prayer, said I, and then in life, and when I end loyalty, here is my bed, sleep, give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. They sleep. Enter Puck. Through the forest I have gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might approve. The flowers force and stern love. Night in silence, who is there? Weeds of, Athens he, uh, weeds of Athens he doth wear. There is he, my master said, despe- despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound, on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst no lie. Near this lacks love, this kill courtesy. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw, all the power of this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid, sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when thou, for I must now, to 
Ulgarok. Exit. Enter Demetrius and Helena. Bye. <laughs> Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou, darkling, leave me? Do not so. Stay on thy peril. I alone will go. Exit. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, who, who where sore she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright, not with salt? If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I am ugly as a bear, for beasts that meet me run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel through Demetrius. The, do as a monster fly my presence thus. What wicked and dissembling glass of mine made me compare with Hermia's fair, fairy eye. But who is here, Lysander, on the ground, dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. Awakening. And run through fire I will for thy sweet sake, transparent Helena. Nature, nature shows art that though thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word. Is that vile name to perish my sword? Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What though he love your Hermia? What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you. Then be con content with Hermia. No, I do not. I do. N I do repent. The tedious minutes I with I, I with her have spent. No, not Hermia, but Helena. I love. But who will not? change a raven for a dove the man the will of a man is by his reason swayed the reason says you are the worthier maid the things growing are not ripe until the se their season so i being young till now ripe not till reason and touching now this point of human skill reason becomes the marshal to my will and leads me to your eyes where I overlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore I was... I vote for a five-minute break because I need to poop. It's, it's near, we're, nearly <laughs> at the end. we're nearly at the end of this act. But yeah, after the um, end of the act, we can... Take a shit break or something. Right? That was the most MC thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, I have over for a five minute break. I need to poop. Make sure you eat a box of crayons as well, sir. I think you have one more. You have one going. more verse left. So like finish that and then have the act over. Uh, <laughs> Stick it out. <laughs> 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 Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's, it's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never, no, nor never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye, but you must flout my insufficiency? Good troth, you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo, but fare you well, perforce I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness, oh, that a lady of one man could refuse, should of another therefore be abused. Takes it. She sees not Hermia, Hermia sleep not thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near, for a suve surfe of the sweetest <clears throat> things the deepest loathing of the stomach brings, or as Ty hearest that men do leave, men, men do leave, or are hated most of those they deceive, so thou, my surfute and my heresy, of all hated, but the t most of me, and all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Exit. Okay. 
Do I say waking or do you say waking? Just just start. Okay. Help me, Lysander. Help me. Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I need for pity. What a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Methought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord, what out of hearing gone? No sound, no word. Alack, where are you? Speak. And if you hear, speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. No, then I will perceive you all not nigh, either death or you all find immediately. Exit. Okay, shit break. Whew. Please. Yeah, it's too far. I need to... Helena is a fucking thought. Whoever is <laughs> doing that is doing a great job. Okay, everybody take a quick break. Do whatever you got to do. Let's do this quick. Let's do this fast. No, quiet. Everybody just do what you got to do. No conversation. We're not having a conversation. Just go get your water. Take your shit. Take your piss. My back. My back. Uh, M. Ehrman Trot, you shitty actor. Shut up. Yeah. We're not, don't be rude. We're, we're just reading. I mean, it's yeah, like we're not sad. criticizing each other. Anybody who participated in this is is grateful. Don't fucking do that. Just go take your piss, get your glass of water, smoke your bowl, have your cigarette, and get back and let's this do is, this damn thing. This, yeah, Everybody's this, doing a great this, job so far. This shit's hard too because these are like like really long monologues. Like it's not <laughs> back and forth. Everybody's you know, doing a great job. Just eight. let's keep it going. Five, just keep going. Okay, <laughs> ninety seconds. Let's go. Yeah. And some people like real quick. You're doing fucking amazing. I'm rolling my cigarette. Language like English is some people's not first language, and this is no, fucking. Everybody's doing so an like, amazing like, job, so let's just mm-hmm. appreciate that and not <laughs> fucking criticize each other like certain people who should wear more lipstick and talk less. <laughs> okay, I brought this last the part. The next part that I'm gonna read. Yeah, my dyslexia is <laughs> gonna kick in hard, like in, about in a few minutes. So just okay. be warned. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh, Tiny Cactus's role of Nick Bottom if he has to go. But if he at some point goes, I'm gonna take his role. No, Unless I'm someone else wants. Okay, go ahead, Spud. You got it. You got Nick Bottom. No, no, hold on. No, you don't take. Hold on, Shogun. Don't take Nick Bottom. That'll be confusing. Uh, okay. Machina, can you be Nick Bottom? Not now, you fucking retard. No, I'm taking. How about no, me, Bottom? Hold on. Okay, 60 seconds, guys. 60 seconds. Hold on. Who said? I'll be, I'll be bottom. No, don't you? I don't have a role in the third. Shut up. I'll be bottom. I'll be bottom. No, let Indigo. Hold on. Shut up. Let Indigo be bottom. She just asked for. Do you guys talk about Let her. If, if he has, if you have to leave, if you have to leave. If not, then no. But if you do, then let yeah, Indigo. Yeah, you DM me and said you had to leave. So someone's taking your role if you yeah, leave. If I you're gonna stay, then no problem. Whoever is leaving, leave. Indigo, you jump in as Nick Bottom. I'm still Nick Bottom. Okay, but if you go, then no, Indigo wait. will take it over. Until then, you will be his role. Simple. Uh, oh. Because you said you're going. I said I'm, I have to go. Okay, Tiny, you DM me to say you were leaving. So don't be confused about why we're filling your role. If you're going to keep your role, then that's fine. Okay, no big deal. Is everybody done? we got 30 more seconds. We're getting back in 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, Indigo, I should apologize. Uh, I didn't know this version. It just said fairy instead of like the optional fairy's names. In my physical copy, it has the individual names. So I'm I'm sorry about that. No, you're fine. What page are we on? Um, fair thirty six. Yeah, thirty six. Yeah, thirty six. But very simple. Just like Shogun said, if perchance this person leaves, then Indigo will take it over. If not, then he continues the role. Very, very, very simple. Mm-hmm. Okay, are we all are we all back? Are we all? I'm I'm gonna go. I get, I'm I'm not back basically. Uh, okay. <laughs> Take thirty more right, seconds. We are just we uh, almost an hour right now recording, and okay, I have to make good. an announcement. An announcement. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry for my English because I'm not a native. So you're doing great, man. You're doing great. No announcement. Yeah, you're doing perfect. great. Everybody's doing great. Nobody's saying. doing a bad job. Everybody just keep it up. No additions, no commentary. Don't say, oh, fuck, oh, shit. I don't know. I screwed that up, too. But just read the thing, and if you make a mistake, just take a deep breath, be silent, and try again. And if you fucked up, just continue on. Don't go back and, like, fix it. Just keep going. Is MC back? Shall we go back? Um, who's MC? But MC is... Ermintraut. Mike Ermintraut. Mr. Ermintraut. Who's MC? I think... I think in this scene, he's not. 
No, this is all the actor. So he. Okay, then we can start. We can start. Let's go. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Act Act three. See the wood. Titania lying asleep. Enter Quince, Snug, Bottom, Flute, Snout, and Straveling. Bottom. Oh, is it me? Yeah. That was Quince. No, it's Bottom. Go, Tiny. Okay, Peter Quince. Uh, no, your line is, oh. Are We All Met? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, are, are We All Met? I'm sorry. Pat, Pat. And here is a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green pot shall be our stage. This hawthorn break our towering house. And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. What sayest thou, bully bottom? There are things in comedy of Pyramus and uh, Tish that, that will never please first Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself which the ladies cannot abide. How, how answer you that? By a liking a tall sphere. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not wit, I have a device to make all well. Write a prologue, and then prologue seems to say we will do no harm with our swords, and then Primus Primus is not killed, indeed, and for the most for the better as tell tell them the Primus am not. Oh, is something Primus, but but bottom weather. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No, make it to our moral. Let them, let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it. I promise you, master. You're out. You're out to convince with yourselves to bring in God. Shield us, shield us. A lion among a lion among ladies is the most dangerous thing. For these, I'm not fearful, wild fowl. Then your lion living in were out to look to. Therefore, another prologue must tell he's not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his fact must be seen through the lion's neck, and he and he himself. Must speak through saying thus or or to the same. The fact ladies or fair ladies, I would wish you or would request to you or will it interest not to fear, not to tremble my life for you, for yours. If I think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am not such a thing. I am a man as other men are. And there is indeed let him uh, let him name his name and tell him. Plain, plainly, he snuck the joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things, that is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine that night we play or play? <laughs> oh, a, a calendar, a calendar. Look in the... Uh, Elm, find out moonshine, find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why then? Why? Then may you leave uh, Sismet uh, of the great chamber window where we will play open and the moon may shine in the season. I don't know. Yeah. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lanthorn, and he say he come to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine, then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story. Did talk through the chink of a wall? You can never bring a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall and let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall, 
and let him hold his fingers thus through the sharing shall premise and tip your wisp. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you but begin when you have spoken your speech. Enter into that break, and so every one according to his cue. Enter behind. What hempen home spurs have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What, a play toward? <laughs> I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Primus. Tishby, stand for. That's me. Speak, oh, that's your answer. Fisby, stand for. Fisby, by the followers of outside Saber Swift. Odors, odors. Odor, Saber Sweet. So half my breath, my dearest Fisby. Dear but half heart of a voice. Stay up but we're a while and then um, um and by and by I will to the here. Excellent. A stranger. Hermes then error played here. Exit. Must I speak now? I, Mary, must you? For you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he heard, and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on a triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and, a- and most lovely Jew, as true the truest horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninny's tomb? Man, why? You must not speak that yet, but you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once. Cues and all Pyramus enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tired. Oh, as true as true as horse that yet would never tire. We enter Puck and Bottom with an ass's head. <laughs> if it were fair to be, I were only th- th- Oh, monstrous, oh, strange. We are haunted. Pray, masters. Fly, masters, help. Exhumed quince, snug, flute. Snow and struggling. I'll follow you. I'll lead round through bog, through bush, through brake, through briar. Sometimes a horse that'll be, sometimes a hound, a hog, a headless bear, sometimes a fire, a neigh and bark and grunt and roar and burn, like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Exit. Uh, why do you run away? This is why do you run away? This is Kinavi of of them to make me. Oh, bottom, do I change? What do I see on thee? Uh, what do you see? You see an, an ash a, ass head of your own. Do you... Exit now. We enter Quince. Bless thee, bottom. Bless thee. Thou art translated. Excellent. I see their. What, what is that word? Knavery. It's pronounced knavery like an N. K N like N. Okay, knavery. This to make an ass of me, to fright me, if I could, but. If I could, but I will not str- strive from this place. Do what they can. I will w- wait, walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. Fuck me. The owls. <laughs> I'll sing it for you. Yeah, go ahead. Let's say. The owls of cock so black of hue. No, 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 don't take good. his line. Don't take his line. Listen, just do oh. your best, tiny cactus, and fucking just do your best. So it's osel or usel. It doesn't matter. Just just go for it. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Just go. Entire house. Fuck me. The osel cock. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> the cock so black. <laughs> <laughs> The throstle with his note so true, the wren will little quit. <laughs> the oh, was... I shouldn't say. No, <laughs> no, no. Okay, Tiny Cactus, Tiny Cactus, your line is the Oso Cox of Black. Ready? Three, 
two, one, go. <laughs> the others like, cocked the back of the stage with all his bloody pillow, trying to look at the nuts, secured their own with a little quill. Continue, awakening. What angel, what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The, f- <laughs> the thin sparrow of the light, the thin cuckoo <laughs> gray, whose nose will be omitted from a and do not answer name. But it did who would see it fo- to so foolish, a bird who could would give a bird the, a lot, bleh, the lie for a cry. Cuckoo, <laughs> herself. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear, <clears throat> mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair, <clears throat> and thy fair virtues force pair force doth move me. On the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Mm. Methinks, me <laughs> misters, you should have a little reason for that, and yet you say the true reason. Love to keep little company together. Now I daze them more, keep more the pity than some honest neighbors who will not make them friends, nay, bleak upon ocean. Thou art as wise as art thou art so, <clears throat> thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither, but if, if I had wit enough to get out of the, of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give you these fair be fairies to attend on thee. <clears throat> and they shall fetch thee jewels from the beat. And sing while... While thou on pressed flowers dost sleep, and I will purge my, thy mortal grossness, though that shall, like an airy spirit, go. Peace, blo- peace blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Okay, I fucked up. They are named. I'll just uh, do them in different voices, real quick, if you want. Okay. Enter mm-hmm. peace blossom. Okay. Seed. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, no, enter. Oh, okay. Your voice, your voice fairies. Oh. Ready? Ready. And I. Wait, it's it's no, let indigo, indigo, let indigo, 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 indigo do it. Indigo 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 indigo. Oh my bad, I'm cobweb. What's going on? Stiggy, you're supposed to read enter, and then we're going from there. Uh, MC, we're on page forty-three. Okay. So we're on the same page. Enter. So Stiggy's edit. Stiggy's gonna read enter, peas, blossom, cop, etc., and then you're all ready to go. Three, two, one, go. Enter peas, blossom. Cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready, and I, and I, and I, where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, <laughs> with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the bumblebees, and, <clears throat> and for the night tapers, crop their waxen thighs. And the light, <clears throat> and light them at the fear, fiery glow of worm's eyes. To have my love to bed and to rise, and to pluck the wings from the painted butterflies. To fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Immortal, hail, hail, hail. I cry your worship mercy. <laughs> I bless your worship. Cobweb. I should desire. Uh, I shall desire you of more acquaintance, good master. Cow, cow, cobweb. If I cut my fingers, I shall make blood with you. Your name on. Your name on is gentleman. Peace blossom. I pray you commend me to Mistress Squash. Your mother and your master, peace, God. Your father, good masters, peace, blossom. I should desire you of more. I, but two, your name I 
bitch. This <laughs> 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 This siege. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're doing a good time to get you. Oh, uh, the siege. The, it's a siege. name, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You're doing a good time to get you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, you're great. Yeah, <laughs> mustard. Mustard seed. Good master mustard seed. I know your patience as well. The same cowardly giant with ox beef hath. The very many gentlemen of your house, I promise. Your kind your hat made my eyes water. Ere now I desire your more acquaintance. Good master mustard seed. <clears throat> Come, wait upon him. Um. Lead him to my bower. Bower, the moon methinks looks like a water looks with a watery eye, and when she and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie me, tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently. Things do seem to. I love her partial fluid. Enter Oberon. I wonder if Titania be awake. Then what it was that next came in her eye, which she mustowed on in extremity. Enter Puck. Here comes my messenger. Here now, mad spirit. What night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. Next to her close, near to her close and concentrated bower, while she was in her dough and sleeping hour. A crew of patches, rude mechanicals, that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play, intended for a great Theseus nuptial day, the shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a brig, when I did him at this advantage take, and asses know what I fixed in his head. And on this fisbe must be answered. And forth my mimic comes, when they him spy. The wild geese, like the creeping fowler eye, or russet pathed coughs, many in sort, rising and cawing to the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky. So at his sight away his fellows fly, and at her swamp. He roar and o'er one falls. He murder cries and help from Athens calls. Their sense thus weak, lost but their fears thus strong, made senseless fit, begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their appeal snatch. Some, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch. I lead them on in this distract, distracted fear. And left sweet Pyramus translated there. And in that moment, so it came to pass. To tie walk straightway, loved an ass. <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bathe thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he walked, of force she must hide. Enter Hermia and Demetrius. Stand close. This is the Athenian. This is the one, but this is not the man. Oh, why rebuke him so that loves you? So, lay breath so better on your bitter foe. Now I but tried, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. And if thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'er shoes and blood, plunge in the deep, and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day, as he to me, would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I believe as soon, this whole earth may be bored, and that the moon may through the center creep, and so displease her brother's noontide with Antipodes. It cannot be but thou hast murdered him, so should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. 
So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty, yet you, the murderer, look so bright as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere? What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him to me? I had rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog, out, cur, thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Oh, once tell true, tell true, even for my sake. Durst thou have looked upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch, could not a worm, an adder, do so much? <clears throat> an adder did it, for with doubler tongue than thine, thou serpent, never adder stung. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's brood, nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. Makes it. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Hence, therefore, for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, for debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe, which now in some slight measure it will pay, if for his tender here I make some stay. Why is that in sleeps? I know this is confusing because it's both shogun, but... <clears throat> I'll try and change my voice a little bit. Uh, Demetrius can have a higher voice and Oberon's can have a lower voice, you know. Yeah. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love sight. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turned true. Then fate will rules that one man holding troth, a million fall, confounding oath on oath. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. All fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the flesh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou, bring her here. I'll chime his eyes against she do appear. I, I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartar's, Tartar's bow. Exit. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye, when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Re-enter Puck. Captain of her fairy bride, Elena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for her lover's fee. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fills these mortals be? Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to wake. Then we'll do it once, we we'll one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me. That befall preposterously. Enter Lysander and Helena. Why should you think that I should woo and scorn, scorn and derision, never should come in tears? Look, when I vow, I weep, and vows so born, and their nativity all truth appears. How can these things in me see scorn to you, bearing the ba badge of faith, and to prove them true. You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, O oh devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her o'er? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me, put in two scales, will even weigh, and both as light as tails. I had no judgment when I one to her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. O oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine, to what my love shall I compare thine eyne? Crystal is money, O oh, how ripen show thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow, that pure congealed white high Taurus snow, fanned with the eastern wind, turns to a crow. When thou hand'st up thy hand, O oh, let me kiss thy princess of pure white, the seal of bliss. O oh, spite, 
Oh hell, I see you are all bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were re civil and new courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my parts when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals and love Hermia and now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes. With your derision, none of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. Hermia, and this you know I know, and here with all good all will, with all my heart, and Hermia's love I yield you up in my part, and yours, Helena, to me been bequeath, whom I do love and will do till my death. Hmm. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. I, Sander, keep that, Hermia. I will none. If ever I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest wise sojourned, and now to Helen is it home returned. There to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou abide dear. Look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy dear. Re enter, Hermia. Dark night that from thy eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the same sense, it pays the hearing double recompense. Though out not by mine eyes Lysander found, mine ear I thank it brought me to thy sound, but why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? By Sanders love that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more and glides the night there than all you fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seeks thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait with me this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent when we have chid the hasty foot of time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? All school days friendship, childhood innocence. We, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, voices, and minds had been incorporate. So we grow together, like to a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet an union in partition. Two lovely berries molded on one stem, so with two seeming bodies, but one heart. Two of the first, like coats in heraldry, do, do but to one and crowned with one crest. And you will rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly, our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face and made your other love Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates and wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich with his soul and tender me forsooth affection, but by your setting on by your consent. What thought I be not so in grace as you, so hung up, so hung upon with love, so un so fortunate, but miserable most to love unloved? This you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. Neither do I. <clears throat> a <laughs> perceiver, counterfeit, sad look. 
make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Winky ch- winky chatty winky chat <laughs> winky chat other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument, but fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay gentle, Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. Demetrius. Demetrius. I'm sorry, if she cannot entreat, I can compel. <laughs> Thou canst compel no more than she can entreat. Thy and thy treat have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee by my life I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee, to prove him false, that that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Quick, come. Oh, Lysander, where to tends all this? Away, you Ethiopi. No, no, he'll seem to break loose, take on as you would follow, but yet come not. You are a team man, go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing, let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Thy love out thawing tartar out, out loathed medicine, hate poise potion, hence. Do you not jest? Yes, soothe, and so do you. Matrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? What should I hurt her, strike her, kill her deed? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me. Wherefore, O me, what news, my love? Am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I am as fair now as I were erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid, in earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, but be out of hope, of question, of doubt, be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, and I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love, what, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Oh, fine, if faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fee, fee, you counterfeit, you puppy. Puppet? Why so? I that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And you are... And are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarvish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in this shrewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match. Lower? Hark, again. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you for a fault. For love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go, to Athens will I bear my folly back. 
and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how, how fond I am. Why well, get you gone? Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What? With Lysander? With Demetrius. Oh. <laughs> Lysander. Mm. Lysander. MC. MC? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. What page? It's your line. Be not okay. afraid. 59. 59. Middle of the page. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is... Little? Again? Nothing but low and little? Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her. Be gone, you dwarf, you minimus of Pargreen. <laughs> Not for us, maid, you deed, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part, for if thou dost intend, never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try whose right of thy or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by toll. Exhumed for Lysander and Demetrius. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. Excellent. I am amazed, and know not what to say. Exit. This, oh fuck, sorry, second fire alarm of the night. (laughs) (laughs) Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise. But I have anointed an Athenian's eyes, and so far am I glad I did it sort. As this third jangling, I esteem a sport. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou and on with drooping fog as black as Asheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. Like to Lysander, sometime frame thy tongue. Then stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometime rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep, with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep, then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error from his might and make, I'm sorry, and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they next wake all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. And back to Athens shall the lovers wend with league whose date till death shall never end. While I in this affair do thee employ I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fair lord, this must be done with haste, for night's swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger. At those approach, ghosts wandering here and there, troop come to churchyards, damned spurs all. That in crossways some floods have brought burial, already to their wormy beds are gone, for fear lest they should look upon their shameless spot. They willfully, they willfully themselves exile from light, and must for I consort with black proud night. But we are spirits of another sort, 
I, with the morning's love, have oft made sport, and like a forester the groves may tread, even till the eastern gate all fiery red, opening on Neptune with fair blessed beams, turns into yellow gold his salt green streams, but notwithstanding haste, make no delay, we may affect this business yet ere day. Exit. Up and down, up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared and feel in the time. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Re-enter Lysander. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be thee, be with thee straight. Follow me then, to plainer ground. Enter Lysander. That's following the voice. Re-enters Demetrius. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, art thou fled? Speak in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bracking to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookst for wars? And wilt not come, come, recreant, come, thou child, I'll whip thee with a rod. He is the that draws the sword on thee. Ye art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no man who's here. Exeunt. We enter, Lysander. He goes before me and still dares on. And when I go, when I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter healed than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. That fallen am I in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. Lies down. Come, thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy gray light, I will find Demetrius revenge this spite. Sleeps. Re enter Puck and Demetrius. <laughs> oh, Edward, why comest thou not? Abide me, if thou darest, for well I wot, thou runst before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come ever, I'm here. Nay, then, thou mockest me, thou shalt by this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way, faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed by day's approach look to be visited lies down and sleeps re-enter helena oh weary night oh long and tedious night abate thy hour shine comforts from the east that i may be back to athens by daylight from these that my poor company detest and sleep that sometimes shut up sorrow's eye steal me a while from mine own company lies down and sleeps Yet but, yet but free, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish land, thus to make poor females mad. We enter Sophia. Never so weary, never so in woe, bedabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further qua- crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander, if they mean a fray. Lysander sleeps on the ground. Sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye. Gentle lover remedy. Squeezing the juice over Lysander's eyes. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known, that every man should take his own, in your waking shall be known. Jack shall have Jill, nothing shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be known. Exit. Act 4. Scene 1. Oh, shit. <laughs> the same. Lysander, Demetrius, Helena, and Hermia lying asleep. <coughs> Enter Titania, Bottom, Peas Blossom, Cobweb, Muck, the fairies, and other fairies attending. Oberon, behind, unseen. 
Come, sit thee down upon the flowery bed, while <clears throat> while I thy amiable cheeks employ, and stick musk roses in the sleek smooth head, and kiss th thy fair large e ears, my gentle joy. For peace blossom. Oh, Come on. You're muted, Indigo. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's no. She didn't know because she is. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, scratch my head, please. Peas blossom where my monster cow. Cobweb. Ready. Cow up. Monster. Monster cow up. Good ear. Get your weapons in your hand. Kill me a red hip. Humble be on the top of a first and good monster. Bring me the honey bag. Do not fit yourself too much in the action, monster. And good monster, have a care of honey bag. Break not. I would be loath to have you overflown. <laughs> honey bag. That word where monster monster seed must where's monster seed? Ready. Give me your nef monster monster seed. Pray you leave your country good monster monster seed. What what you will? No, I thought no. That was uh, your uh, just, uh, <laughs> What's your will? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, Nothing good, monster, but you can help. Calorie, cow, cobweb, trash. I must be the barber's monster. Methinks I am marvelous. I hairy about the face, and I'm such tender, such a tender ass. If I may hear about a tickle, me a scratch. What? Wilt thou, wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongue and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desires to eat. Jesus Christ. Truly a peak pro I get I get much your good dry oast. <laughs> you think I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay. Ah, no. <clears throat> I have a I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and to fetch us the new nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had rather a handful of, I had rather a handful of two of dry peas, but I pray you let none of your people steer me. I have expression of sheep come upon. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be <laughs> always away. Seen the fairies. So doth, so doth the woodbine, the sweet honey. Wait, is that your line or mine? Oh, wait. Oh no. Okay. 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 Sorry. Um, the sweet honey suckle gent gently entwists the female ivy so, and rings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee. How I dote on thee. They sleep. Enter Puck. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did abrade her and fall out with her, for she his hairy temples then had rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And that same dew which sometime on the buds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls, stood now with the pretty floweret's eyes, like tears that did their own disgrace bewail, when I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience. I then did ask of her, changeling child, which straight she gave me and her fairy sent, to bear him to my bower in a fairy land, and now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, gentle Puck, 
Take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he awakening when the other do may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accident, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast wont to be, see as thou wast wont to see. Dian's bud o'er Cupid's flower, half such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was the, enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do this visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titania, music call and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five the sense. Music, ho. Music such as a charmeth sleep. Music still. Now, when thou wakest, with thine own fool's eyes peep. Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now then, and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus all in jollity. Fair king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after the night shade. We, the globe, can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and on our and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Exeunt. Horns winded within. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Aegis. <coughs> We'll go, one of you, find out the forester, for now my observation is performed. And since we have the devoured of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley, let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forester. Exit and exit. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top and mark the musical confusion of hounds at the echo and conjunction. I was Hercules and Cadmus once, when in a wood of crate they bade the bear, with hounds of Sparta never did I hear such gallant shiting, for besides the groves, the sky, the fountains, every region near, seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard such musical, such musical a discord, such sweet thunder. My hounds are bred of the Spartan kind, so fluid. So sanded, and their heads are hung with ears that sweep away the morning and do cork knead and do lap like Thessalian bulls, slow in pursuit but matched in mouth like bells. Each under each, a cry more tunable was never hollowed to, nor cheered within a horn in Crete, Spartan, nor in Thessaly. Judge when you hear, but soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here sleep, and this the thunder. This Demetrius is, this Elena, no, all neither is Elena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the right of May, and hearing our intent, came here and grace our sol solemnity. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Ermia shall give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Then go, bid the husband wake them with their horns. Horns and shirts within. Lysander, Demetrius, Helena, and Hermia. Wait and start up. Good morrow, my friend. St. Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds but to couple now. Lysander. <clears throat> He's not here. He's gone. He's gone. Pardon, my lord. I'll take okay. <laughs> I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How come this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. 
half sleep, half waking, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly what I speak, and now I do bethink me, so it is, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without peril of the Athenian. Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would, Demetrius, thereby to him, to have defeated you and me. You, of your wife, and me of my content, of my content that we should be your wife. My lord, my lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them, fair Helena in fancy following me. But, my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is, my love to Hermea, melted as the snow seems to me now, as the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye, is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed, ere I saw her man. But like in sickness did I loathe this food, but as in health come to my natural taste, now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discord, we will more hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. From the temple by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning now, is something worn, our purpose hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold the feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Exeunt Theseus, Hippolyta, Aegeus. These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see these things with parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks, and I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that we yet sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. Excellent. <clears throat> awesome. C- cactus? Oh, I'm oh, yeah. Sorry. Page 76. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Oh, okay. Where are these lads? Where are these lads? Like... No, wrong one. Oh, when? Where is it? When can my cues? Page 76, <laughs> bottom. 76? Bottom of page 76. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It says awakening in brackets. 76. Where the f- Wait, I'm mm-hmm. right. I'm like if you're on PC, you can do control F and search a specific term to get right to where we are. Yeah. When my cue comes, call me and I okay. will land. When my cue comes, call me and I will... And I will answer my next is most fairy pyramus. High ho, Peter Quince, flute the bellows mender snoot. The finger starving guards my life, stolen hint to the left my asleep. I have had most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wits of a man to say what dream it was. Man, but but an ass, if he go up about the exposure of the stream, me thought I was there. As no man can tell method, I was in method I had, but man, but a patient fool, if you will, not offer to say what method I had, their eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen, man's hand is unable to taste his tongue, to convince, nor his heart to report what my dream was, I will get Peter Coins to write back. Life of his, this dream, it's it shall be called Bottom's dream because half no bottom, and I will sing it in the later end of play before the Duke prevent prevent another to make the more gracious. I shall sing it 
at heart, heart death. Excellent. Exit. Scene two. Athens, Quince's house. Enter Quince, Flute, Snow, and Strapling. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is married. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. No, he has simply the best of wit and the handicraft of any man in Athens. Yeah, and the best person too. And he is very paramour for his sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Oh, shit. Wait, who's... Isn't that squad, or no? Wait. Oh, I think that's oh, wait, no, me. It's not. Oh, okay. Taylor? Sorry. Is it me? Let me double... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're sorry. Oh, snug. Sorry, I was snug. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Masters, the duke is coming from the temple, and there is two or three lords and ladies who are married. If our sport had come forward, we had all been made men. It's he has two lines, and I gave it to. I give it to. Sport. Just keep going. Just keep going. Someone keep going. Oh, sweet bully bottom! Thus has he lost a sixpence a day during his life. He could not have seeped sixpence a day, and the duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing pyramus. I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. A sixpence a day in Pyramus or Enter Bottom. World Where are the lads? Where are the heart? Bottom. Oh most courageous day. Oh most happy hour. Master, I am the search wonders, but ask me not what for I tell you I am true Athen. I will tell you everything right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. I, um, not a word of me. All that I tell, tell you is that the Duke have dined with your pearl together. Get strings to your beards. New ribbons on your pumps made at the palace every man for his part for short and they long as our play in the case let tush be half a clean line and let and let not him the plays the line pair his nails for they shall hang out for the lion's claws and most dear actors eat no onions no garlic for we are utter sweet breath and i no doubt but to hear them say it, it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Uh, go away. Go away. Execute it. Okay, I have to go to sleep now. It's like half an hour. Who are you? Tiny characters? I'll just take over. It's like... Bottom. He's bottom. bottom. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. Taking. Tiny yeah. characters. Good night. Thank you. Good job. Manasseh's Thank got you. your role. Or Indigo. Either one. It's oh, indigo. Indigo. Almost. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Shush. Shush. Go. Bye. Right. I'll see you guys. Good night. Go away. We're doing a play. Leave. Go to bed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, from good evening to <clears throat> sorry. What page are we on? Um, page eighty. <laughs> page eighty's blank. Page eighty-one. Are we scene one entering this? Yeah. Act five, scene one. After the palace of Theseus. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Philostrati, lords and attendants. Tis strange, my Theseus. Love speak. More strange than true, I may, I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold. That is the madman. The lover, all is frantic, sees hell and beauty in a brow of Egypt. 
the poet's eye and find frenzy rolling doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. And as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives them to airy nothing. A local habitation and a name. Such tricks hath strong imagination that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. Or in the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, were witnesses the family, and grows to something of great cons- constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Here come the lovers, full of mirth, joy and mirth. Enter Lysander, Demetrius, Hermia, and Helena. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. More than to us, wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Philostrata. Here, my Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mask, what music? How shall we beguile the lazy time, if not with some delight? There is a brief how many sports are ripe. Make choice of which your highness will see first. Give me a paper. The battle with the centaurs to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the harp. <laughs> Will none of that, that have I told my love. In glory, my kinsman Hercules. In glory of my kinsman Hercules. The ride of the tipsy Bacchanals tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. That is an old device, and it was played when I came from Thebes, when I from Thebes came last to conquer the thrice three muses mourning for the death of learning. Late be- late deceased in beggary, that is some satire keen and critical, not sorting with a nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of young pyramids and his love Thisbe, very tragical mirth, merry and tragical, tedious and brief, that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? The play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious, for in all the play there is not one word apt, one play fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus therein doth kill himself, which when I see her- rehearsed, I must confess, made mine's eye water, but more merry tears, the passion of loud laughter never shed. What are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with some play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intents, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain, to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. Exit Philostrati. I love not to see wretchedness or charged and duty in his service perish. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. I can do nothing in this kind. The kinder we to give them thanks for nothing, our sport shall be to take what they mistake. And what poor duty cannot do, noble respect, takes it in might, not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have purpose to greet me with premeditated welcomes, where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practice accents and their fears, and in conclusion, dumbly have broke off. Not paying me a welcome, trust me, sweet. Out of this silence, yet I picked a welcome, and in the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. 
love therefore and tongue-tied simplicity and least speak most to my capacity re-enter philostrator so please your grace the prologue is addressed let him approach flourish of trumpets enter quintus for the prologue if we offend it is with our good will that we should think we come not to offend or with good will to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end consider that we come but in despite we do not come as minding to contest you our true intent is all for your delight we are not here that you should here repent you the actors are at hand and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know this fellow doth not stand upon points he hath rid his prologue like a rough colt he knows not to stop a good moral my lord it is not enough to speak but to speak Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child, on a recorder a sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain, nothing impaired, but all discorded. Who is next? Okay, this bit's a little bit confusing, uh, because they don't just say bottom. Uh, Trap, if you wouldn't mind just reading all of this. Uh, bottom is um, tiny one. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, but Indigo was supposed to fill in for no. bottom because she's a no, no, but, no, no, Indigo no, but, is going to do. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Do you want to do it in a second? Because no, it's because this well, next bit. Tiny. Hold what, on, what? it's f- fucking shut up. It's because this next bit. Um, instead of just saying it's bottom, it's like it's a play within a play, and I've forgotten. Well, let's let NSA do it uh, unless anyone objects. Okay. Go ahead. Gentles, perchance you wonder this at show, but wonder on, till truth make all things plain. This man is a pyramus, if you would know, this beauteous lady, this be is certain, this man with lime and rough cast doth present. Wall, that vile wall which we did lovers asunder, and through the wall's chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper, <laughs> at which we let men no wonder. This man with long thorn, dog and bush of thorn, presenteth moonshine, for if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet Ninus's tomb, there to, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lie in height by name, this trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And she fled, her mantle did, did fall. Which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain, anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat, with blade, with bloody baneful, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, and Thisbe tarring his mulberry shade. His dagger drew and died for all the rest, let lie in moonshine wall and lovers twain, at large discourse, while here they do remain. Exeunt prologue, Thisbe, lion and moonshine. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may, when many asses do. Someone else just be the be the, be the wall. Who wants one? <clears throat> Go. In this In same the... interlude, it doth befall that I, once not by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think, that had it in a crannied hole or chink, through with which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often very secretly, this loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am the same wall, the truth is so, and this the cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. <laughs> Would you desire Lyman Hare to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard. Discourse, my lord. Enter Pyramus. Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. You want me to do it? Yeah, I, can so do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> oh, grim look night. Oh, night with you so black. Oh, night, whichever art when day is not. Oh, night. Oh, night. A lack, a lack, a black. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. 
And thou, O oh wall, O oh sweep, O oh lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine, the wall, O oh wall, O oh, oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink though with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Job shield thee well for this. But what see I? No thisbe do I see. O wicked wall, though whom so I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see it will foul pat as I told you. Yonder she comes. Enter Thisbe. Can I be Thisbe? Yeah, yeah, Thisbe. Oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice, now will I to the chink, to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's fake face. Thisbe. My love thou art, my love, I think. Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander, I am trusty still. And I like Helen till the fates me kill. Not Shif not Shif not Shifalis to Procruz was so true. She fucked me up. As Shathalus to Procruz I to you. <clears throat> oh kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. I kiss the hole's wall, not your lips at all. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Exeunt, Pyramus, and Fisbe. <laughs> thus have I, Wall, my part discharged so. And being done, thus Wall may doth await. Exit. Now is the mirror down between the two neighbors. No remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff that I have ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> the best in this kind of big shadows, and the worst are not worse, if imagination will mend them. It must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. If we imagine the worst of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellently. Here come two noble beasts, a man and a lion. Enter a lion and moonshine. You, ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion rough in the wild rage doth roar. Then I know that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. For if I should as a lion come in strife, into this place, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast of good conscience. The very best of the beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. This lion is very fox on his back. True, and a goose for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. He is no crescent, and his horns are invisible at the circumference, within the circumference. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man, I, the moon, do seem to be. Now, this is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lanthorn. How is it else the man is the moon? He dares not come there for the candle, for you, see, it is already in snuff. I am a weary of this moon. Would he would change? It appears, by his small light of discretion, that he is in the wane, but yet, in courtesy and all reason, he must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Why, all these should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes Tisby. 
This is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Oh, sorry. Oh! <laughs> well roared, lion. <laughs> well roared, lion. Pieces. Pieces. Well run, Thesby. Oh, moon. Truly, the moon shines with the good grace. The lion shakes Thesby's mantle and exits. Well moused lion. <laughs> and so the lion vanished. And then came Pyramus. Enter Pyramus. <clears throat> Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for showing me now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest this beside. But stay, oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes do you see? How can it be? Oh dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle good, what stained with blood? Approach ye furries, oh, fury spell. Oh fates, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. Look, this passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Be true, my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame? Since lion vile hath here deflowered my dear, which is, no, no, which was the fairest dame, that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears confound, out sword and wound, the pap of Pyramus, a that left pap, where heart doth pop, stabs himself, thus die I, thus, 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 now am I dead, now am I fled, my soul is in the sky, tongue lose thy light, moon take thy flight. Excellent, my child. Now die, 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 die. Dies. <laughs> no die, but an ace for him, for he is but one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead, he is nothing. Uh, with the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Look, here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Re-enter Thisbe. Me thinks she should not use a long ones for such a... Pyramids. <clears throat> uh, I thought it was that. I hope she will be brief. A moat will turn the balance, which Pyramus, which Thisbe is the better. He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. She has spied him already with those sweet eyes. Stay here, are you doing Thisbe or am I? Uh, fuck, he's doing Thisbe. I'll do it, I'll do it. And thus she means videlicet. Asleep, my love, what dead, my dove, O Pyramus, arise, speak, speak, quite dumb, dead, dead, a tube must cover thy sweet eyes, these my lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks, are gone, are gone, lovers make moan, his eyes were green as leeks, O sisters three, come, come to me, with hands as pale as milk, lay them in gore, since you have shore, with shears his thread of silk, Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade, my breast and brew. Stabs That's herself. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> and farewell, friends. Thus, this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Guys. God. <laughs> <laughs> Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. I and Wall, too. No, assure you. The wall is down that parted their fathers. Will it please you to see that the epilogue, or to hear that the Bergamas, the fuck, dance between the two of uh, No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse, never excuse. For when the players are all dead, there needs none be blamed. Mary, if he that writ it, it had played Pyramus and hanged himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy, and so it is, truly. Very notably discharged. Become your burger mask. Let your epilogue alone. And then. The iron tongue of midnight. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. 
Lovers to bed, tis almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming coming morn. As much as we this night have overwatched, this palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends to bed, a fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. As you enter, punk, know the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon. Whilst these heavy plowmen, sh- whilst the heavy plowmen snores, all of weary task for done, know the wasted brands to glow. Whilst the screech owl screeching loud hoots the wretch that lies in woe, in remembrance of the shroud, now it is time of night. Graves all gaping wide, everyone lets forth his spray in the churchway paths to glide, and we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team in the presence of the sun, fall in darkness like a dream. Now our frolic, not a mass, shall disturb that hollow house. I'm sent with broom to sweep the dust behind the door. Enter Oberon and Titania. Through the house give gathering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar, and the stiddy after me sing and dance it trippingly. First, rehe- first rehearse your song by rote. To each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, you will sing and bless this place. Now upon the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, to the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create, ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three, ever true in loving, be, and the blots of nature's hand shall not in their issue stand, never mole, hair lip, nor scar, nor mark prodigious such as are despised in nativity, shall upon their children be. With this field do consecrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless, through this palace with sweet peace, and the owner of it blessed, ever shall in safety rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. Exeunt Oberon, Titania, and Trey. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, whilst these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme is no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not pen, for if you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest buck, if we have an earned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make friends ere long, or else the puck a liar call. And so good night unto you all. Give me your hand if we be friends, and good Robin shall restore men's. <laughs> yes! What? Woo! 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 Yes! Woo! yes! That's all yes. the second fucking Shakespeare can have been a play. Amazing. Yeah. World yeah. first yeah. My West I love you guys. Fucking yeah. I love the poop guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Dude, oh, Becky, you fucking wait. killed it. Good job. Everybody yeah. fucking killed it. I'm sorry I fucked it up at the beginning. I fucked that it up at the beginning, awesome. but everybody yeah. did a great job. Okay, Thank you, yeah. everybody. Two hours. The gentlemen of England minutes. now abed shall thank themselves a gas they were not here. <laughs> Absolutely hours, correct. Oh <laughs> oh <laughs> Tiny guy just tried to say beseech and said bitch. Dude, and Helena was a fucking thought, dude. I had no idea. 